वेलकम टू द सेशन ऑफ डिमांड एंड द सप्लाय लर्निंग आउटकम ऑफ द सेशन बिफोर प्रोसीडिंग लेट मी आस्क यू वन क्वेश्चन व्हाट इज अ माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स यू कैन पॉज द वीडियो थिंक अबाउट द क्वेश्चन राइट डाउन योर आंसर इन योर नोटबुक एंड देन रिटर्न टू द वीडियो टू सी द आंसर लेट मी गिव यू द आंसर द माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स स्टडीज द इकोनॉमिक्स वाइड फिनोमिन सच एज इन्फ्लेशन price levels rate of economic growth the national income uh, gross domestic product and the changes in the unemployment let us see what is the demand the demand is one of the most critical in the economic decision variable the demand reflect the size and the pattern of the market the business activities is always a market determined that's why the demand is very important the manufacturers invest in a given particular company by considering the size of the market and the market totally works on the demand the demand for the output and the input the demand for the firm and the industry the demand for the consumer talkist and similar other demand concepts become therefore relevant for the managerial decision analysis even if the firm pursues the objective alternatives to profit maximization the demand concept plays an important role in that significance of the demand demand is one of the crucial requirement for the functioning of any business enterprises and for its survival and the growth the demand analysis is very important the information on the size and the type of the demand help the management for the in order to make a planning uh, for the requirements of the men material machine money and what the customer want For example if the demand for the product is subject to the temporary business recession the firm may plan to pile up the stock of the unsold products so if the demand for the product shows trend toward the substantial and sustained increase in the long run the firm may plan to install the additional plants and the equipments to meet the demands on the permanent basis demand for the product is falling but while its rival sale is increasing the firm need to plan its self tactics the firm need to undertake some sales promotions activity like advertisement so the demand what you can tell in short what we can say about the demand the demand for the product can be described as a desire to acquire that product willingness to pay for that product and the ability to pay for that product all these three must be checked to identify and establish the demand for example let us consider a poor man's desire to stay in the five star hotel room and his willingness to pay for the rent of that room is not called as a demand because of the lack of the necessary purchasing power so it it, it can be called as its wishful thinking similar to the miser's desire for an ability to pay for the car is not the demand because he does, does not have sufficient necessary willingness to pay for a car let us consider see the law of the demand the assumption of profit maximizing behavior assumes that the owners and the managers know the demand for the firm's goods or the services the demand function asserts that there is a measurable relationship between the price that company charges for its product and the number of units that the buyer are willing and able to purchase during the specific time period economic refer this behavior relationship as a law of the demand which is sometimes called as a fundamental law of the economics law state that the quantity demanded for the good or the service is inversely related to the selling price under the condition that all the other determinants remain unchanged so the term law of the demand is actually the misner the law predict event events with a certain conditions and by the contrast the theory is probabilistic statements of the cause and the effect the law of the demand is a theory as a invariably case when the human nature is involved symbolically the law of the demand can be summarized as the qd is equal to function of the p and the uh, d of qd by dp should be less than 0 that means the equation a states that the qd that is a quantity demanded for the good is a function which is related to the selling price whereas the b states that the quantity demanded and the prices are inversely related to each other the relationship is explained as in shown in the figure the downward slope deter uh, of the demand curve shows that there is a inverse relationship between the quantity demanded for the good or the services and its selling price 
the validity of the law of the demand may be argued on the basis of the common sense and the simple observation at the more sophisticated level the validity of the law of the demand may be argued on the basis of diminishing marginal utility and the income and also the substitution effect let us take an example suppose that you want to buy a mangoes at the rate of 100 uh, rupees per dozen you will buy a six dozens of the mangoes if the price of the mangoes increases by 200 rupees then how much you will buy definitely you will buy the less quantity of the mangoes so what kind of the relationship in between the price and the quantity which is demanded so there is a inverse relationship the law of the demand state that the higher the price the lower will be the demand and also lower the price higher will be the demand the law is stated a uh, primarily in terms of the price and the quantity relationship the quantity of the demand is inversely related to its price here we consider only the two factors a price and the quantity which is demanded all other factors which are determined are assumed to be constant so let us see the law of the supply as per the definition the law of the supply asserts that the quantity which is supplied of the good or the service is directly proportional to the selling price under the condition that all other determinants are remaining constant production and the cost under certain conditions include short run production and the hypothesis of the profit maximization and the perfect competition in the resource markets the law of the supply is based on the law of diminishing marginal returns which is sometimes called as a law of the diminishing marginal product in fact the supply curve of the individual firm is simply the portion of the firm's marginal cost curve which at some point rises in the response to the law of diminishing returns the law of diminishing return is not an economic relationship but the technological relationship that empirically consistent in fact the law of diminishing marginal returns may be the only true law in the economics the law of diminishing marginal returns in fact make the law of supply stronger relationship than the law of the demand with that case consider the following hypothetical market supply function symbolically law of the supply can be summarized as qs should be equal to g of p so dqs by dp should be greater than 0 so the equation a states that the quantity supplied that is qs of the goods or the service is functionally related to its price that is the quantity supplied is a function of the price whereas in case of the equation b it shows that the quantity supplied for the product or the service are directly related to the price that means they are directly proportional to each other the relationship is explained in the figure the upward sloping supply curve indicate that there is a positive relationship between the quantity demanded of the good or the services and its selling price the market supply curve shows various amounts of the goods or the services that profit maximizing firms are willing to supply at each price the market supply curve establishes the relationship between the price and the quantity which is supplied the changes in the price and the quantity supplied of the good or the services are represented diagrammatically as a movement along the supply curve the chart shows the law of the supply using the supply curve which will be the upward sloping the point a the point b and point c are on the supply curve each point on the curve reflect the direct correlation between the quantity supplied and the price so at point a the quantity supplied will be q1 at the price p1 a supply curve is upward sloping because over the time the suppliers can choose how much of their goods to produce and later bring to the market at any given point in the curve however the supply that sellers bring to the market is fixed and the seller simply faces the decision to either sell or withhold their stock from the sale the consumer demand set the price and a seller can charge only what can market will bear if the consumer demand rises over the time the prices will rise and the suppliers can choose devoted new resources for the production means new suppliers can enter into the market which increases the quantity which is supplied into the market thus the demand ultimately set the price in a competitive market and the supplier responds to that price they can expect to receive sets of quantity which is supplied the law of the supply is one of the most fundamental concept in the economics it works with the law of demand to explain how the market economies 
allocate the resources and determine the price of the goods and the services into the market these are the references for the session thank you